What's up guys? Finally, I'm gonna do a review on this custom knife. This thing is awesome. And here it is, in all its glory. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this away, because I wanna read you the paperwork that I got with this knife. This is uh, coming from New York Knife Maker, okay? And then obviously you see the website on there. And as we open this up, we'll read a little bit about this. This was sent by my friend Ryan. He wrote, hey Jeff, thanks for taking the time to review my knife. I hope you like it. I believe this is right up your alley. This is the upfront version of the Warncliffe, uh, which is, which its basic difference is the thumb ramp being pushed forward. I think it's a great design and hope you like it, buddy. Uh, it's 154cm uh, with professional heat treat from Peter's Heat Treat with a uh, cryo treatment as well. Uh, Rockwell's 59 to 60. Uh, it's blue C Tech handles, or it has blue C Tech handles with a high polish um, finish fastened together with stainless pins and epoxy. Um, if you don't mind, can you add a link to my YouTube channel in the description box? Yes, because you'll see a bunch of other work from Ryan. I'll put this in the description box as a clickable link. Because God knows you don't have time to actually type this in, so I will do that for you. <laughs> but anyway, yes, Ryan Carlson is the custom knife maker. And he's doing some awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, when I saw his work, um, I was interested. And I was just asking some questions about it. And he, he said he'd uh, send one to, uh, to review, to test out. And I've been EDCing this for a long time now. And I'm liking it a lot. There are a couple critiques I can make. No one's perfect, not every knife is perfect, and even if it's perfect for one person, it's not for another person. It's all preference. But there are definitely things about this knife and design that I really like, and I would love to see, again, not only with Ryan's work, but uh, with other knife makers as well. So first things first, I don't have specs ready, so I'm going to be measuring this for you. All right, so our cutting edge looks to be exactly four inches on the nose. Um, hard to say blade size, I mean, some people refer to the blade size being your actual sharpened edge and for mo I would say more people than not, it would be from the top of the handle to the tip of the blade. That's your, your blade, okay? But in this particular case, our handle scales um, go past where the edge starts, which first of all, I really like. It's a design thing. It's very visually appealing to me. I like how the handles, uh, the scales extend up, all right? It's something different. You don't see that very often. Our edge starts here. Okay, down by the Ricasso, but our handle scales surpass that. I would love to see a knife in the future, maybe not this exact design, but I'd love to see the handle scale go halfway up the spine. I just think it's cool, it's different. So anyway, yeah, cutting edge being four inches and overall length being right at eight inches, okay? Um, it's a good size for a lot of different uh, cutting chores. I have been EDCing this in this sheath. Let's take a look at the sheath for a second. It's just a very basic, leather sheath, you see it's just a rectangle. Um, it's not really even form fitted. It's just the fact that the, the handles widen up enough where it's a snug fit on the bottom. It's, it's very nicely done, it's super simple, and what I like about it most is the fact that it is rectangular. It does not move around in my pocket because this is how I've been carrying this, just right in the pocket. Now I know this looks like a large knife, even being eight inches long. Uh, this fits in every single one of my pockets on all my shorts, my pants. Uh, I even carry this with my gym shorts. So it's not an issue as far as carrying it. Uh, it is new to me to really carry a fixed blade loose in the pocket like that, I mean, in a sheath, but because of the sheath uh, shape, because it's not completely contoured around the blade, um, it allows me to do that without you know, it moving. There's very minimal movement in the pocket, which I really like. So when this is in my pocket, you don't see the knife, you don't see the outline or anything. All you see is this lanyard hanging out, all right? Uh, and so when I access a knife, I grab the lanyard with my, my last two fingers like this, okay, to help pull it out, and then my pointer fingers, I'll grab the handle. And then of course I'll reposition. Now there was one or two cases where um, I stuck my fingers through the lanyard, and this actually worked even better, because when I was pulling it out, I was able to get like a normal grip on the knife. I didn't have to reposition my hands. But then of course, depending on how I would grab it, um, one of the cases it was perfect, the other case it was kind of floppy, and the lanyard was up here, so I had to readjust that but not a huge deal. And speaking of the lanyard, there's enough length here to actually have a four finger grip if you wanted to use it functionally as a lanyard, you could. All right, works very nice. I like the added touch of the C-Tech being a bead at the end of the, uh, the lanyard. That's really nice. It's just a cool little touch, ties everything together. Just like the little skull bead, it's not necessary, but it's interesting and it adds to the overall look of the knife. 
I really like the way this looks. I really, really do. Um, I don't know where to start here. There's so much to say. Let's start with the handles, okay? Obviously, this is my first, as I mentioned before, this is my first experience with SeaTech. This is obviously a blue uh, SeaTech. It's got that honeycomb pattern in it. It's really, really interesting. I really like the way it looks. People have been experimenting with uh, different liners. You can see through it enough to see the uh, holes that are drilled out into the, uh, the stock so that it's a little bit more, um, you know, it's lightened up a little bit by those holes. Also, I, for this particular design, I like the hollow pins for this. It definitely adds to the overall look of it. And same with the, uh, the lanyard. So that is also very nice. Very uh, highly polished. You can see, I mean, the glare on the lights overhead. But it just looks beautiful. Um, there is a nice finger troll here. Okay, it's very functional. It feels very comfortable in the hand. It's very ergonomic, but I think it's also a versatile ergonomic uh, handle where a lot of different people, different hand sizes, can definitely grab this and still have that nice secure feel. There's a little bit of uh, jimping on the top. It's very light. It's barely, you can see from the side, it's barely in that steel, but it does give you a little something something. Um, so as far as design, I mean, I love the, the added bead that ties everything together, but it's not actually part of the knife, so I can't say I love the scales. I love how they ride up on the blade. The overall design, this Warncliffe, is very cool looking. It's actually, it's an interesting hybrid. I mean, obviously you can see it's chisel ground, which a lot of people, I got comments when I first showed it, people said I would buy that knife in a heartbeat, but I don't do chisel ground knives. And I get that, I understand that. And on the back side, because it's chisel ground, it almost leaves something to be desired. It's like a blank slate. Of course, this side is amazingly beautiful, and then this side is just blah, it's plain. But that's just inherently what it's gonna look like being chisel ground. I say hybrid because it's chisel ground, but the grind we have on the front is hollow ground, which is usually not the case. So that's also unique. Warncliffe blades, um, they're extremely easy to sharpen. Obviously, we just have a basically a straight edge. This one comes to a ni nice, acute point. Penetration is very easy. It was very simple to get into uh, boxes to open them up. There is a, uh, a swedge on top. Let me give you a front angle here so you can kind of see that, that hollow ground or hollow grind on the one side. And of course, our flat side. So it's interesting. It's not my first choice for uh, a knife uh, being chisel ground like this. This side is beautiful. Um, I will say, being a righty, and he knows I'm a righty, this is the right way to do a chisel ground blade, okay? To have your flat side on the left side of the blade when holding it in your right hand like this, okay? This is the proper way to do it for function. Most people have their, their presentation side on on this side of the blade for righties. Okay, obviously more, more righties than lefties out there. It's more, that's more um, aesthetics over function, where this is more function over aesthetics. So, um, it, it, you know, it carried well. He is, uh, you know, 154 CM, he is right, you know, in being professionally heat treated. I can tell the difference, believe it or not. I've gotten uh, homemade knives before. People use great steel. I, there's one particular case, I'm not gonna mention it, but the person made uh, a very cool knife with a uh, S30V but they did not, they tried to heat treat it themselves and it was very, very poorly done. And you can tell, it doesn't matter what the steel is, it, it was performing like some Chinese flea market knife um, because you need, ultimately you need a proper heat treat uh, for the steel to function as it's supposed to. So it doesn't matter what it's made of, don't get fixated on that number, you have to make sure that it's, it's being properly uh, handled and prepared. So, uh, and a, a one hit I can make on this knife, um, the, the chisel ground part, it's not really a hit, it's just preference, but it's not my personal preference. But the one thing I can say that no one's gonna like is the fact that these are so highly polished, they're beautiful, they're wonderful, but they're also too squared off, okay? It's not sharp, but our edges are very squared off. So I would imagine a little tapering around the edges, all around the handle, they would make this knife go from like a, an eight to a 10, all right? So it's just, it's the only really critique I can make to this knife. As far as design, it's gonna be very specific to one's needs and what appeals to someone. Like I said, some people like the way this looks, some people won't like the way it looks, but I can tell you it functions amazingly uh, well. And uh, Ryan did a great job, uh, particularly outsourcing his uh, heat treat. I think this is a mistake some beginner knife makers make is they, they wanna do everything themselves. And a lot of people do realize um, that they can't <laughs> properly heat treat their blades, so they get those professionally done. They'll do the grinding, they'll do all the uh, the work like that, and they'll finish the knife. Um, but but some people out there, and I, you know, again, I'm not going to name anyone specifically, but they're so fixated on 
It has to be 100% handmade and they're, they're just not uh, properly equipped and they don't have the knowledge that it you know takes to, uh, to properly heat treat a blade. And again, it doesn't matter how cool they look, the ultimate purpose for these things are to cut stuff and if it's not gonna hold an edge, I don't want it. And that's just what it comes down to. It could be the most beautiful knife in the world, but I'm not a 100% collector, I'm a, I'm a user. So I can appreciate aesthetics, I can appreciate beauty, but you know I want a functional tool. That's what I'm looking for in knives. And Ryan did a great job with this one. I think it's very cool. Uh, I have subscribed to him. Uh, I do enjoy seeing all of his different knives. He's a, a bunch of different designs, but this is more of a, a common uh, theme uh, to, to his work. So if you're interested, check it out. Check out his channel. Um, you know, ask him any questions. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, I will continue to EDC this for another two days just because I like it. And this will come back into my EDC rotation. Uh, I'm actually quite fond of the, the whole fixed blade in the pocket deal now. It may not always be what the case is. I, I constantly change my mind. I am much more of a folder guy, but I, I've grown to, uh, to like this quite a bit. So who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll work out a system where it's in my, uh, my back pocket or something. But... Anyway, that's uh, that's it. This is uh, very well done, Ryan. I think it's it's awesome. I don't know exactly how long you've been making knives, but you know what you're doing. You definitely know what you're doing. My only real function critique on this knife is smoothing out those edges just a little bit. They don't they don't create um, hot spots. You know, even when using this knife pretty hard, I was cutting a lot of plastic straps for work, and we had a crap load of phone books come in, and I used this to cut all the saran wrap over the uh, the pallets of phone books. Um, you don't get hot spots where your hands sore, but you definitely notice that these are a little bit too squared off. So that's my only critique. Rounding that up, you can have a knockout package here. So, and yes, that's very no homo from one guy to another telling me it's a knockout package. <laughs> and an unnecessary comment at the end. With that, I will leave you before I dig myself into a, a deeper hole. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.